Welcome to another video. In a previous video, I talked about the first pigeonhole principle. This is the second pigeonhole principle, and it's a very basic one, just as the first one was. It's just that I felt it was a good idea to break the pigeonhole principle into two, or maybe three or four. But I'm just going to stop here and treat everything else as, um, as a consequence of of the first and second pigeonhole principles. And I'm going to write the second pigeonhole principle on the board and I'm just going to do a small proof and give an example. Let's get into the video. So the second pigeonhole principle states that if you place M objects in n boxes then at least one of those boxes will contain the floor of the average or less and that's a very powerful principle which if you don't think about you don't you go yeah that's true but again you have to think about it now let's write it less objects I know if you want the English to be very precise, you say fewer, okay, instead of less. But we're doing math here. We don't do fewer, we do more or less. So, that's it. If M objects are placed in N boxes, then there is at least one box containing M over N, the floor of M over N, or less objects. Now, this is very important when you talk about averages, because as you can see, this is more like you're dividing something by a certain number. So, there is always something that is equal to the average or less than the average. In fact, one of the corollaries of this, or what some people call the third pigeonhole principle, is that if a number is the average of some other numbers, then there is one of those numbers that were added together and averaged has to be equal to the average or less than the average, or has to be equal to the average or greater than the average. It's a consequence of the pigeonhole principle. So, if your average grade is 92%, then one of your tests must have been 92% or greater than 92%. And one of your tests must have been 92% or less than 92%. There is no other way to it. So average is actually important. Okay, let's prove this. So this is going to be the proof. And it's going to be by contradiction as I did the first one. By contradiction. So notice that we said there, is, there has to be at least one box. It could be all of the boxes. But if we say that no box contains the floor of M over N or less, what we're saying is that all the boxes contain more than the floor of M over N. And when you're counting, more than this means this plus one, which is, in, in some cases, the ceiling. But let's just stick to this or plus one. So... Assuming every box contains M over N plus one or more, okay? Or more. Let's write it here. Or more objects then the total is at least going to have n times m over n you take the floor and you add one to it so you notice that what you really have will be okay now whenever you take a fraction okay and you're taking the floor of a fraction what you're losing is a proportion that is less than one 
okay? That's why you take it as the floor because the floor is just the gap between two integers. So whatever you use here to multiply this n, if you lose anything because this is a fraction, it's just a portion that is not up to a whole one. But you're gaining a whole one here. So what you're doing is you have overestimated what you started with. Whatever you're gonna get here is gonna be greater than if you just multiplied n by m over n, which is equal to m. So you're starting, you started with m, but you're ending with something that is greater than m. That doesn't work like that. So you lost just a fraction of n here, but you gained a whole n, so you're, you're, starting, you're, you're getting what is more than what you started with, with this equation here, or inequality. So it is not possible for any of the boxes to not contain something that is according to what we described here. At least one of the boxes has to be. Okay, let's take a very good real life example. Suppose a student brings in a report card and the report card says the student's average is 57. And the student keeps claiming, no, let's, let's not do 57, maybe 79. And the student is telling the parents that, hey, I always got above 80. I always got above 80 in all the tests that I do. And you go by the pigeonhole principle, it is impossible for your average to be greater than all of the scores you ever got. I mean, to be less than all the scores you ever got. You cannot average things and not get one of them being equal to the average or less than the average. It's the pigeonhole principle. That's it. So when you average your scores, one of your tests must have been equal to the average or less than the average. I don't think I need to write that. You know it. Go check your scores. Never stop learning. For those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.